Dear fellow travellers, adventurers and other followers, hope you're all doing well. There are some news in the travel world and it's that one of my fellow Dutchmen has been arrested in Egypt. This gentleman, 43 years old, had the ambitious plan to travel overland to South Africa. He entered Egypt by boat from Greece, and I can only presume that he made that he made the tour to Greece on his motorbike as well, which is all rather exciting. But where it went wrong is after the gentleman had entered Egypt and the capital of Cairo, a bustling metropolis with over 60 million registered people. That's bigger than New York. Who knows how many people there really are? Might as well be over 20 million, who knows? Cairo is a bustling metropolis that is not like Amsterdam, where this gentleman is from. Amsterdam is a city of the world, which is to say that the whole world knows about Amsterdam. Amsterdam is the world in one city and that may be so but Cairo is the real world Cairo is where life happens and where as they say shit hits the fan Cairo is where you need to watch her every step uh, Moscow is where you need to watch her every step although a bit less so Sao Paulo in Brazil is where you need to watch for every step because it's where stuff happens, serious stuff happens. Uh, happens in Amsterdam too, but you know, you have rights, you're reasonably safe. I mean, it's still one of the safest countries in the world. It's peaceful, uh, you might get mugged, but even that's a small chance. You know, Cairo is on a whole different level. Egypt is safe if you stick to the pyramids. Uh, things can turn around rather quickly when you venture off the paths and you make a wrong decision like this man did and I do feel sorry for him so what went wrong uh, the man was at his hotel in Cairo I can only presume he had breakfast and went back to his room uh, after his morning coffee he took his drone and got to the roof terrace of his hotel so I don't know where this hotel was or what the surrounding area was like if it's next to the pyramids I have absolutely no idea and it doesn't really matter for the story so how it continues is um, the man just wanted to videotape his journey towards South Africa the progress along the way and what's cooler than filming anything with a drone just fantastic so um, drones have become a bit cheaper and lots of travelers and fellow adventurers have purchased drones and just taken them with them you get a manual but a whole uh, different level of precautions comes with that when you travel to other countries uh, the man let the drone fly uh, I presume around the hotel a few circles just to capture the surrounding area then there was an employee of the hotel who saw the gentleman flying the drone. This employee then proceeded to say this is a very big problem or anything of the sort. Uh, I guess nothing much happened after that. The man just retrieved his drone and got back to his hotel room. Who knows, he got ready to explore the city, to go to the pyramids or whatever, uh, maybe a Nile cruise, a walk by the river, uh, visit one of the really world famous museums. But his plans got interrupted when a few hours later the police knocked on his door and arrested him for spying. So the man from Amsterdam was taken to an unknown location, an undisclosed location few days later a video appeared online from the Egypt uh, from some Egypt TV channel I don't know which one 
with the man uh, saying that he's a 43 year old tourist from Amsterdam and uh, that he was arrested, not much else. He looked very confused, uh, perhaps he looked like he was under immense pressure, mental torture, you never know what happens. He looked sleep deprived and who knows he was forced to, to do his word on camera, you don't know what happened. So obviously, this is quite important, and um, the Dutch authorities are trying to find out where this gentleman is being held, because that's of big importance. Uh, we need to know how he's doing, how his mental health is, how his physical health is, if he's being fed well, because we can only uh, accept the fact that Egyptian prisons are not like Dutch prisons. I mean you're probably stuck with 10, 20 uh, or who knows how many people in a jail cell. Uh, not the most friendly folks, I, I can only guess. Uh, the authorities are probably not very friendly with you. Who knows, you have some communication issues. Perhaps they force you to say things that you didn't do. Because certainly the man was not a spy. He didn't want to be taken by the authorities. I mean. This is not your plan for a vacation. He just wanted to capture the surrounding area. Not keeping in mind that the Egyptian authorities are currently being very strict. Uh, there have been protests against the president, against the current uh, regime, we can say. The authorities are on sharp. They are on edge, on the edge of their seats. They have been in fights. They are still in dispute with IS, the Islamic State. Um, the authorities are serious, no matter whether you agree with them or not. Um, they do not like foreign guys on motorbikes taking pictures, let alone flying with a drone. Um, so there were these protests in Cairo and obviously the authorities, uh, I think they thought that, well, this guy's probably spying, he wants to capture a bit of the protests. I can only uh, guess that's a possible reason why they detained him. Uh, even whereas that was not the intention of this man. So um, he should have known about the political situation, first of all. Or perhaps first of all, he shouldn't have gone to Africa or to Egypt with a drone. Because if you look up the drone rules by country. Egypt has a two year jail sentence for having a drone or at least using a drone. You cannot take a drone into the country, you cannot use a drone. And it's not very smart to fly a drone without having asked the hotel staff, without knowing what the buildings in the vicinity are. Are there any government buildings? Is there a police station? Is there a prison nearby? Is there an airport nearby, a few kilometers away? I don't know. I don't know. But I can only guess that the man also didn't know. Because he did a, a very unwise thing. He didn't know the area. He didn't know the laws. And the stupid thing is that he has a two-year jail sentence hanging above his head where all he had to do was a quick Google search Egypt, drone, enter. To your jail sentence. Do not take your, your drone into Egypt. Stay in countries where you have rights. Stay in countries where you know the authorities are not looking for people who are nitpicking them. Stay in the mentally sane countries such as your own. Stay in the Netherlands, Amsterdam or go to South Africa. You have some 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 laws there it's still i mean it's a first world country but to go through egypt and to have the plan to continue throughout africa throughout sub-saharan africa without knowing about the drone rules that's not very smart and then what i read is that the family of this man they're obviously very upset and afraid of what would happen I mean, this is one of the most terrible things that can happen. A, a 
family member who is detained in a country far away from you. And not even that, but you don't know where he's being detained, for how long, on what grounds, and what he's being accused of, what he's being forced to say. We can only, we can only think of what's going on behind these thick concrete walls of some Egyptian prison or a foreign authority or, a, uh, or some inter internal authority. We, we don't know what's going on. And they said, the family said, this is a, this is a huge misunderstanding. So one comment there. There is no misunderstanding. There is no misunderstanding for the Egyptian authorities. Because had the gentleman done a Google search, focused on the political situation of Egypt, or for that matter, every country he passes through on the way, which are quite, you know, uh, unstable, like Sudan, or some other countries like Egypt, you need to watch her every step. There is no misunderstanding for the authorities. They saw or they heard that the man flew the drone. There's a law against that. They will detain you on what grounds? At least that you flew a drone where you were not supposed to. You were not supposed to have the drone with you. It's not allowed. There is no misunderstanding here, dear family. There is a crisis ongoing which needs to be solved. But there's no misunderstanding. So, although I feel very sorry, it was a naive step that this man took. Second of all, uh, it was written that the dearest friend of this adventurer, of this traveler, said, quote unquote, the guy's a true adventurer. Well, let me share my thoughts on that. A true adventurer indeed would go on his motorbike to South Africa. That's an amazing, amazing journey that I would like to take. I mean, I would be on your back seat probably. But an adventurer does his homework and prevents unnecessary risk. You always have risk because the roads in Africa are not safe. The roads in South Africa are not safe. They're some of the deadliest in the world. But you go because you live life. You're 43. You want to see some more. Uh, you have the money. You have the time. Perhaps you have no children. I don't know. You just do it. And in a way, I even envy you because it's a wonderful thing that you did. But you didn't do your homework. And that's where it went wrong. You took an unnecessary risk. Perhaps you didn't study the political situation. For sure, you didn't study the drone rules per country, for which we have a Dutch website, droneopreis.nl, drone on vacation or on travel.nl. Um, five second search at most. Then a true traveler also avoids catastrophe and being detained in a foreign country is a catastrophe even if you are let out after a month after a week after a day it's a catastrophe because your very being is shaken the bones are shaken inside of your body when you're detained in a country like this it can seem very exotic it can seem very beautiful the people can seem also friendly you just met these people at a the hotel they greeted you they said where are you from welcome to egypt enjoy the sun go see the pyramids have fun but then you fly a drone under roof terrace and these people are not so friendly they call the cops on you and there you go Friendly country, suddenly not so friendly. And then you will suddenly depend on your rights, which you do not have. You have the right to shut your mouth. You have the right to speak on television, what we 
tell you to tell on television, I guess. You got into a catastrophe there, adventure, which I really pity. I feel extremely sorry for that. And I hope this doesn't happen to any other fellow traveler. It happens all too often. Um, you didn't avoid catastrophe because if you avoid catastrophe, perhaps you do a whole lot of research. You don't take your drone to Egypt. If you avoid catastrophe, you watch your every step in authoritarian regimes like Egypt, like the other countries that you're going to visit on this trip, like Sudan. You better be very careful. Uh, it's North and South Sudan now, by the way, I know, but uh, the same rules, the same rules probably. I don't know about drone use in Sudan. I don't have a drone. To be honest, I don't really care to look it up, but you know what I'm talking about. You need to be extremely careful. Then I come to the subject that we Dutch people are quite naive, especially those who haven't ventured outside of their country a lot or who have only traveled to sunny locations, to wonderful destinations, haven't gotten the vacation vibe and gone back home, but haven't lived in other countries. I've lived in several countries. I know not to film the, the airports or anywhere where there's security, to film the police, to, to film exchange offices, to film banks. But I've seen people do it. I've seen tourists taking pictures of borders in Egypt. I've been to Egypt. I've crossed the border and there were people taking selfies at the border with the customs agent somewhere behind. That's not what you do in these countries. That's not what you do anywhere. Perhaps in the Netherlands, we don't have the authorities, but you don't stand at the airport taking a picture like this. You'll get at least a remark. Hey, do that somewhere else, not here. You just don't do it. You are careful with the government, especially in other countries. And as Dutch people, we live in such a protected and civilized country. It's all wonderful and green and there's flowers and there's everything. There's butterflies, the air is clean. Uh, you can ride your bike in the sun or in the rain a lot of the times, but you're safe. Nothing happens any day. Nothing happens ever. You're as safe as can be. And if you ever get into problems with the cops, you're caught somewhere uh, taking a leak in some street, perhaps you get a fine, but you can just say, sorry, I didn't know. I mean, I couldn't hold it. Sorry, officer. Uh, you might get a fine, but who knows? It's not all that strict. You can get away with a lot of things in my country. Um, I'm not going to speak about the judiciary system in any country or the Netherlands for that matter but we are quite on a different level than Egypt we're in the EU we have human rights we have everything it's one of the most fantastic countries in the world it's one of the freest countries in the world you can be gay you can marry you can do anything you want and um, Egypt mm, Try being a homosexual in Egypt, try visiting as a tourist, you'll need to watch her every step. I've been to Egypt, I was extremely careful, even though I was there just for a day. I didn't use the dating apps, nothing, nothing. No risk, don't take unnecessary risk, avoid catastrophe. The Egyptian authorities are on gay dating apps, tracking you down, or at least tracking Egyptian men down and arresting them for being gay, for being on an app without even having committed a sin. So don't be naive, my fellow Dutchmen, my fellow travelers. My fellow Dutchmen who traveled to Area 51, traveling beyond the signs with their stupid rental car and with their drones in the back of their car, who knows what they were going to do the Amer American authorities don't joke around, they didn't like it. The guys got a fine and they were just lucky, extremely lucky, lucky asses that they didn't get jailed for being spies because that's what happens in serious countries like the US or like Egypt or like Russia and 
the world is not like the Netherlands. The Netherlands is a top shelf country. The rest of the world is the real world. That's outside our bubble. And that's where you need to rely on yourself. And where your mama is not coming to save you. Because she is not coming to save you from Egyptian prison, from a Thai prison, from anywhere. Your government might perhaps not even be able to save you. Uh, you're in such a catastrophe when you're in jail in one of these countries. It shakes your core. Who knows, you'll get a trauma. Who knows what they tell you. Who knows what disease you get. It might get very cold at night. You're shivering. Who knows what you get. Something on your lungs. Something on your feet. You can die in these places. Try being there for two years. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it from the bottom of my heart. But at the same time, I can't call this gentleman an adventurer. Rather, a naive traveler who ventured out of his bubble and had to bite a bullet. And I'm sorry for that. And I hope it will turn out fine. But please, fellow travelers, be warned, do your homework and be safe. You are always responsible for your own safety. Keep that in mind and I wish everything uh, good for my fellow travelers. Safe travels, have a wonderful life. Do not be afraid to go out there. I've been to Egypt, people were very friendly. I enjoyed it and I would even go back. But I would be rather careful. Take care. Bye-bye.